Coming up on Live in the D, happy Monday, everyone. It's time for some Music Monday. And we've got little guys dressed in tuxedos. Well, penguins. I'll be here. <laughs> Are they serving anything? <laughs> no, no, no. Also, uh, paying it forward. Stay tuned. Good Monday morning, everyone. I'm Everett Cashman with another local 4 News update. And police in Shelby Township need your help this morning finding a missing 18 year old woman who might be in danger. Her name is Madison Redpath Kirkwood and here's her photo. She disappeared on Friday and was last seen near the area of, of the Oak Hill Apartments right there on West Utica Road between Mountain and, and Ryan. Madison also goes by the name of Maddie. So if you have seen her, you're asked to contact police. In the meantime, here's Brandon with your Monday morning forecast. And we are stuck in the 60s. We've got rain. We've got a cold front. Not a lot of movement in the temperatures today. 63 Metro and City Airport, 63 Gross Eel, 63 in Mount Clemens, 60 degrees right now in Howell. And you can see some light rain in Livingston and Oakland counties. Some rain pushing again into Metro Detroit and downtown Detroit. So for the next hour or so, we'll have showers around stuck in the 60s. Some sun, though, returns this afternoon. The human steady cam yeah. swooping in yep. from the shadows. Who needs a rig? <laughs> no, not him. We have Kevin. That's it. all we need. Good job. Welcome to Live in the D. Chuck, Tati, Jason, we are here with you. We'll carry an umbrella for you. Whatever it takes, just stay with us. We've got a whole hour to get your week off on the right foot or the left foot. Whichever. Both feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of people <laughs> sign up to get you to hold their umbrella for them. Oh, whatever. I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We could hear the rain coming down in the uh, local four atrium. It sounded like uh, the people mover going right through the station. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was loud. Our daily jam today starting off, Why Can't We Be Friends by War, released in 1975. Such a jam. And we're playing it because an act of kindness is going viral thanks to a man from Michigan. Isn't this Exciting. sweet? I mean, this is really cool. This actually happened in Australia. Australia. Is that how you say it? Australia. Australia. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tyson Crawley was at a gas station, filled up his vehicle, filled up a gas can, bought some drinks, went to pay, and couldn't access cash. That's right, because he had apparently just switched bank accounts and didn't have the new card, right? So yeah. that's when the man behind him paid the entire bill, which was about $85. So Crawley asked for the man's name and information so he could pay him back. The man wrote on the receipt, John, pass it on. How sweet is that? Come John's on. the guy, uh, John Kennedy Jr. from Saginaw, Michigan, yeah. who yeah. to play hockey. He's lived there ever since. He has uh, gone into uh, professional life there. And um, yeah, he just paid it forward, decided to, uh, he would take care of what a sweet story. As they say, sweet. mate. Take care of his mate's mate. problem. Yeah. 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 Filling up the petrol. That's, That's right. nice. You know, <laughs> the there the are petrol? people who do That's that. They make it a regular practice to pay for the guy behind them. Yeah. Behind Somebody them. right here does that. Don't you do Every that? Every once in a while, I have done that. I've, I've done it. I've also done it for a police officer who was right behind me because I thought in case I was speeding out of the Tim Hortons, which... <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. I think it's a good thing to do. Don't do it for me, Chuck, because I'll order a $20 cup of coffee. Give me a venti, triple shot. No, just kidding. Yeah. So I know that you guys have already got this down pat, right? But if you guys haven't heard this advice, you have to never stop dating your spouse. It's actually true. Hmm. Do we have date nights I like going that. on? Yeah, we have a lot of date nights. Date and nights. they're not like big deal nights. I mean, they're not like, you know, the biggest thing in the world, but it could mm -hmm. just be a movie. Yeah, it could yeah. be pretty much anything. Right. All right. So apparently a monthly date night can make couples happier according to a study done by Lincoln University. I believe it. Mm, Sometimes so you just need to get away. It, they say that any time spent together without distractions of everyday life, probably this too, you know, be in the moment, mm -hmm. be with me, uh, that that includes the kids, reduces the risk of splitting up by 14%. So Impressive. if you're just by yourself and you're in the moment, I think that's wise. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know you can really do it up like 
I did on Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. oh. oh, tell us, Fernando, what, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Almost two years ago. No, I, I, I did not spend an in, insignificant amount of money. I, mm -hmm. I, it turned into like Valentine's weekend. It included uh, okay. lunch and dinner and overnight stay. Isn't and that and nice? salon, salon visit? Mm. So yeah. Very well nice. done, Mr. Well, Carwell. Well, we'll have to smooth, smooth like that with a V. <laughs> with a V, smooth. smooth. Binge watching, binge eating, and apparently now binge thinking. No wonder my brain hurts. Yeah, so it's not a good thing. Huh? Just relax. So experts say that is it is a form of emotional oversensitivity that leads to overthinking every mm. situation and spirals out of control. Leads to anxiety, anger, depression. I believe it. What do you think? Do you ever do that? My mind never stops racing. The gears are always grinding. The I'm always thinking about something that's, you know, ruminating over something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I've heard people say that they, and I don't know, I think it's related to this when I looked at the article, that sometimes they'll write the end of the story, they'll conjecture what's happening. And so they don't really know the end of the story or right. you don't quite know the motivation and then, I don't know. I think the problem is, is that they always estimate the end of the story to be something less than positive, right? Oh, yeah. So instead of thinking like, oh, this is going to have a happy ending, happily ever after, they're always thinking of the last step as the worst case scenario, this is what is might Is that happen. the same as this study, though? Is that, or is this a little different? It's just a people, little different. Uh, just, just overthinking yeah. everything, overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. Uh, how is that different than, for instance, the other day in the LITD office, the compound upstairs, mm -hmm. I threw a waste at the wastebasket, a piece of paper, and of course it bounced off and landed on the floor. And I said mm -hmm. to Tammy, one half of Jammy, our producing team, I said, that always happens. Uh, my entire life, whenever I go to make a shot in a waste paper basket, it always, I say always misses, but I probably make fewer than 30% of those. Why right. that is, I don't know, but yeah. it's, is it confirmation bias or am I just remembering the misses? Mm. Right, mm. right. And why does it matter, Mr. It, I'm thinking all the time. It I mean, really. It doesn't right. matter in the long... Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. here we go. All right, so we're going to get... We have paper? You know, just use the rundown to the show. It's okay. We've seen the show. All right. I've got right. people throwing paper at me. That almost made it into my coffee cup. Uh, yeah, that, let's <laughs> like, see if this works. What are you doing? <laughs> all right, go ahead. Go for it. we got to wait for the shot. Go we got to get Kevin's... Oh, you're on. It's in the wide shot, right? All right, there we okay, go. Ready? Go. See? Oh, yeah. Oh, there okay. one out of two. Yeah. One out of two ain't bad. Yeah. Randy's shaking his head because he's, you know, the <laughs> that's, a, that's good. <laughs> Those are all the people outside in the rain. They, that sounds like the rain yeah. coming down yeah. the vocal for you, Jim. All right, stress. Stress may counteract a healthier diet according to new research. Oh, I've heard this oh, one too. Boy. So volunteers were given high fat and low fat diets to follow, right? Mm -hmm. So in every situation, the subjects who ate low fat diets who ate low fat diets but reported having high stress in their lives didn't see the benefits of a healthier diet. Does that sound great? Sorry, when you miss like that, are you on a. <laughs> I'm, my brain is like, uh, I can't believe I made 50%. It's gonna mess up your diet. <laughs> I'm ready to try out for Randy's team. So instead, the stress had the same effect on their body as eating a high fat diet. So that's interesting. So basically, stop stressing out. Yeah. yeah. Because it's going to release some kind of hormones or something. I'm not a doctor. I just play right. one on TV. Right. But I'm thinking that it does something like that. Yeah. Okay. Four out of five doctors recommend, but you're the <laughs> lone the holdout. There you go. Right. You're that one out of five. <laughs> McDonald's is trying, to, trying something new to help struggling sales. The Golden Arch is testing Happy Meal breakfasts at 73 locations in Oklahoma. The breakfast Happy Meals come with a choice of egg, cheese muffin, no Canadian bacon, or two McGriddle cakes along with apple slices and a go-gurt and presumably a little trinket or a toy or something. Hmm. something. Why, oh, why isn't work. that a good idea? But now I don't know how many people are going to, uh, are, you, are you not giving your child food? You're just going to toss the Happy Meal in the back on the way to school or something? If you ask one of my teacher friends, who I will not say your name on TV, it's okay. better than, Mrs. <laughs> I will not do you like that. It's better than you having students come in with sugar-laden drinks, uh -huh. bag of chips and chocolate chip cookies yeah. and other junk, which sends them on a total crazy sugar high, mm -hmm. and you can't teach them effectively when they're in class, I will not say your name. That's hmm. what a teacher friend of mine tells me. It happens all the time. Well, so get a happy meal instead. We in who Oklahoma. have stock at McDonald's, thank you, Tatiabara.com. <laughs> Our retirement is dependent on it. There you go. You can go to McDonald's. The little things. In, in Japan, they're test marketing pumpkin <clears throat> spice fries. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. I would try those. I'd eat a couple. And if it's successful there, they're going to bring them here next year. Oh, boy. Let's go. That's exactly what we need, isn't it? Pumpkin Snapchat stuff. is coming out with something this fall that we need called Spectacles. Uh, they are glasses that allow the wearer to take 10-second point-of-view videos or snaps and post them to Snapchat for about $130. 
So. I believe this is going to totally take off. What do you think? Do you? Now, didn't we have, what was it? Wasn't Google Glass? Was Google it? Glass. Yeah. But I think that that suffered from sort of a, not nerd cool, but nerd, it just took on a, yeah, just yeah. plain nerd. nerd. Plus, the yeah. price point was way higher, wasn't it? Yes. And that's 600 or something? Yeah, it was yeah. really high, yeah. A lot of money. Well, speaking of smartphones, there's a big debate that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Do you need a separate camera other than the one on your phone? That's what do you funny. say? Well, I'm with you because if something important is happening or if I go on vacation, I always take the good camera. The good camera. You bust out the good camera. Yeah, I actually have it in the car in the garage right okay. now. Um, I took a picture. When I see the stuff downtown, mm -hmm. um, it just sort of, I, I want to capture that. I get out the good camera and I oh. take the telephoto lens and I right. snap Make it. Is it digital though? Yeah. It's, it's a, a digital camera. But digital okay. SLR. I don't know. I think, that, I, I think the cameras and the phones are great because mm -hmm. you, you can get wonderful registration. You get a great, and you're, right. on the, you're on the spot. You don't always right. carry your camera. Right. But I, I still like having a camera. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. But sales figures show something different. Camera sales are down, and att attachments for phones are becoming the new thing to get the quality shots that people are really looking for. I'm going right? to take a selfie of all so three of us right now. Do it. Okay, ready? There it is. One, two, three. We're going to post this on our live in the D page. Ready? One, two, three. Got See, it. See, with a picture like that, yeah. who needs a regular camera? Now, where do you put the flash cube? The flash cube. <laughs> the Good night. Huh? Good night. <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. <laughs> and Randy and I were talking about flash cubes. You remember the, the bar of little bulbs, right? And Tati's like, I, I, I I'm telling you, I bet it exists for iPhones. I will find it for you. No, no, it was a thing that rotated. You don't need it anymore. Okay. Yeah, you don't, All yeah. Right. But, oh, are we doing it again? No. Anyways, <laughs> traditional DSL cameras can cost hundreds to even thousands of dollars. And people just are just opting for buying really cool lenses for their iPhones. I'm actually yeah. looking for one myself. Yeah. Oh, you mean so, the little attachment? Yeah, thingy? that you attach. Yeah. So yeah. that's what's happening. I have a wide, uh, like a fisheye for this. It clips right on. Uh -huh. Works yeah, great. Not that expensive either. No. It's like 20 bucks, right? Good. You guys look great in there. I look that's at my Photoshop. Thank you. I look. You look very nice. Bye. No. Oh, that's handsome. Very uh, handsome. We're going we're to put it on our Live in the D Facebook page. That's at for Live in the D, closing in rapidly on mm -hmm. 51,000 fans. Stop we it. We just all celebrated right. 50, Good now stuff. we're going to 51. Well, could you all just head over to a great community event that if 51,000 people show up, uh, this is going to be a ball tonight. It's rain or shine. It's on the uh, line of Gross Point Park and Detroit, the 26th annual St. Ambrose Oyster Fest. Ooh, la, it's not Oktoberfest, Oyster Fest. This is a community event under the tents at Kerchival and Lake Point. You know, St. Ambrose, I think it's over 100 years. Wow. It's been going strong. It's happening rain or shine, and I looked. Uh, it's not my deal anymore, but mm -hmm. I did look. I think the rain part is gone, and maybe even the shine right. part is coming back. <laughs> Don't tell Brandon. Obviously, this includes oysters. There's going to be shrimp, pasta, chili, crab cakes, much more. They've got 25 local restaurants. I've seen a number of 40. Uh, it includes all the usual along the east side. Uh, Buscemi's is there. Lots of great food and Ooh. fun and a party. It's a big party. Good so stuff. check it out. Good stuff. All right. So what makes you happy? Uh, Oyster Fest. Oyster Fest. Uh, what else? Jason Carr. Television. Television. I mean, doing television. I don't doing watch television. a lot of television. Happy. Okay. Being with the kids. Being with the kids, right? So a lot of people say that. Food, family, or just simply having fun. So I recently headed out to Detroit to see what gets people in a good mood. Check it out. What do you do to cheer yourself up when you're in a bad mood? Listen to music. Listen to music. It has to be the right song, so it's got to be like a good song. I go on adventures. I get in the car and just go away as far as I can with no rhyme or reason, just fun. No destination, just go see what's out there. Yeah, exactly. Think about my kids. I try to think about my children. Uh, the purpose that I live for. I play with my daughter. I have a eight, about to be nine year old, going on 43, <laughs> and uh, she really cheers me up. Yeah. I like to spend time with my family. Do you want to tell me how you cheer yourself up when you're in a bad mood? Usually, I spend it with my puppy. Exercise. It's kind of my life right now, but that's usually how I spend it: is just take him to the park, go for a walk, some sort of exercise. Good stuff. Very nice. Good stuff. So what 
song puts you in a good mood because that one got us oh, talking. I couldn't pick just one song. Are you kidding? The, 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 the list is endless. I mean, anything from the old Tonight Show theme, Johnny Carson, okay. um, to the Superman theme by John Williams. Uh, That's a great song. That is a Isn't great that great? Song. Stirring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chuck Gatica. Well, I am an earth, wind, and fire guy. True. So, uh, you know, I was going to say September, but probably fantasy. Okay. Um, how about you? I would say any old school Michael Jackson will put me in a good mood. That's good. Yeah. I was in a great mood this weekend. That's good. My wife was out of town, and I, no, it's just a kid, my wife. See the kid, side eye? Kid, my wife. She's like, giving you the stink eye over The stink there. eye. The, the stank <laughs> side. It's the stank Team side. Team Susan Gatica <laughs> right here. She's coming we just home invented something good. new, the stank side. The stank oh. side, right. <laughs> side eye and the stank face, all in one, ah, stank side. Ah, well, and you're good at it, too. Thank you. Get a lot of practice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, starting the, the week off with a new giveaway in our secret stash. It's not going to be a secret for long. This is huge. It it's is huge. 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 It's exciting. Yep, here it is. What are we giving away, well, Chuck Kataka? How about, the, well, first of all, it's Mark's secret stash, which okay. means whenever you, you know, as talent, we look at that. We go, what is that? Oh, it's the secret stash. Now we know. And in here, this is one of the more specialer giveaways we have ever had. Look at that production. So many button. different reasons. So, uh, <laughs> we broke the production oh, budget. Oh, big. Right we do it big. So right. we are giving away an entire house of carpet, up to four rooms. The value is up to $5,000. This is wonderful, but there's so much more to this story. So, I mean, that's just cool enough. Five grand a new carpet for your house. What a perfect time of the year. We want to thank our partners, the Carpet Guys and Mohawk Flooring, right? And they're donating it to a Breast Cancer Survivor, all part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is going on throughout October. Go to our Live in the D Facebook page, as I mentioned previously, at 4 Live in the D, and nominate a breast cancer survivor. Share their story, and that person could win this prize and appear right here on Live in the D, at yeah. 4 Live in the D, the number 4 Live what in the D. What a great idea. A great idea. You know, great and so here we go. We're almost to October, so we're going to do this through the week. We'll announce a big winner, and then we'll be able to make somebody happy as we head into the fall. That's right. Awesome. Can That's we right. get an isolated shot on Tati and, like, say, camera two or one of those? And uh, can there. I see the, the, the stank side stank again? Stank side. Stank side. <laughs> you know, you know it's a little like friendly. Furrow. It's Wait, still let's see. Yeah. Friendly. You got you got, you got you got to catch me in the moment. Then you'll All get right, the real stink. But you got to yeah. say something crazy. Watch, watch. Well, Susan was out of town, so I had a great weekend. Yeah. <laughs> You know what my it's mom would say? You know, she would say, don't do that too long and make it stuck. Yeah, I know, it'll stink. It'll <laughs> stick, right? Yeah. Yes, I'm an expert at that. Still ahead on Live in the D. Once a cheater, always a cheater? I don't know. The debate rages on as people continue to analyze the doomed relationship of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And up next, Live in the D. Not live in the studio. Uh, we take you behind the glass and underwater at the newest exhibit at the Detroit Zoo. If you change the channel, you won't get to see penguins. And who doesn't love penguins? I like them. We want to say hello to our Live in the D fan of the day. It's Kevin Feldman from Clinton Township. He's won two tickets to the, I'm glad there's two tickets. because Yeah. Two tickets. Oh, yeah, yeah. To the Kellogg's Tour of Gymnastics Champions at the Palace. Simone Biles, Gabby Douglas, Michigan's own Jordan Weber, all among the gymnasts at the event. If you want to be our Live in the D fan of the day, just follow the link to our Live in the D. Guess what? Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Oh, for contest, for contest rules, you can always go here any time of the day. <laughs> Click on Detroit.com. <laughs> tumbleweeds. The crows yeah, yeah. and tumbleweeds. Okay. <laughs> go to click out under the scene on Fort Tab. We got lots of rules there. Seen us. I can't do a cricket. So. <laughs> can't do a cricket. I thought you were trying to do a penguin. <laughs> Tomorrow on Live in the D. A beloved Detroit icon seeks a new home. Take a trip down memory lane and inside this national treasure tomorrow on Live in the D. Ooh, ooh I know what that is. Yeah. I got to, yeah, I can't say. Earlier this year, the uh, Polk Penguin Conservation Center opened to the public and thousands of people waddled through the doors this summer. That's right. It is the largest penguin exhibit in the entire world and an experience you simply can't miss. Well, thanks to the state of the art technology, now you can go on a journey that you've never been on before. Penguins have been a part of the Detroit Zoo for a very long time. Back in the 60s, we pioneered the original penguinarium. But over the years, you know, it became obvious that it was time to really move state of the art for how penguins live in zoos, and that is kind of the origins of a very long and complex and involved design process that ended up with this. 
I'm Scott Carter. I'm the Chief Life Sciences Officer for the Detroit Zoological Society. It has to start with what do penguins need to be happy? Uh, well, we knew that penguins need space, that penguins like to spend time in water, so they needed deep water, that penguins like to be with a lot of other penguins, and that penguins need a place that's pretty cold. The building is 33,000 square feet. Um, the pool is 326,000 gallons of water, and it's 25 feet deep. It was intended to look like an iceberg. Um, it looks like what's called a tabular iceberg, a particular form of iceberg um, found in Antarctica. There are four species of penguins. King penguins, which are the biggest species we have, they're the second largest species in the world. Gentoo penguins, rockhoppers, and macaronis. And those are the four species that are found in between the tip of South America and Antarctica. After we design for penguins, we have to design for guests because we want their experience with penguins in here at the zoo to be very cool and very exciting. And what we ended up with is actually taking people on a trip which takes them to Antarctica to experience kind of the sights, the sounds, the water, so that their experience is memorable and that it's educational. We always want people to learn when they're at the zoo. One of the key messages here is the issue of climate change. We are all contributing to it and we all can take steps, even small steps, that will reduce our impact and reduce the effect of climate change. Zoos often have to balance what animals experience and what guests experience because when people come to the zoo they want to see animals up close, they want to see animals moving around, and oftentimes that means the space animals get is compromised and not ideal for them because it makes it easier for them to see. Here that was actually pretty easy to do because the penguins are in a great place, people can see them from both sides, they can see them from underwater. This is one time that I think we really got it right in terms of making it the best for penguins and the best for people. All right, so stay tuned because a little later on in the show we're going to go behind the scenes to find out how they care for the penguins and keep up this multi-million dollar attraction. So very interesting, yeah, very, it's cool. They're so cute. Yeah. Next on Live in the D, how old are you? Well, one website may start removing the age of some of the biggest Hollywood stars. Mm. But first, here's a Local 4 News update. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm at Brad Kasamine with another Local 4 News update. And the two candidates, the two presidential candidates, are going to finally meet in the first presidential debate. With the election night just six weeks away and polls showing a pretty tight race, a lot is riding on this premier Clinton versus Trump face-off, the first of three matches. Uh, Trump in his first one-on-one -on -one debate. The question is, can he keep his cool? And then Clinton, a veteran debater, how she's going to handle possible attacks on her and win over the undecided voters. Of course, you can catch that debate when it airs tonight at 9 o'clock right here on Local 4. In the meantime, let's check in with Brandon for your Monday morning forecast. All right, so a lot of questions with the weather. Is it going to be raining on the Tigers game tonight? Big series with the Indians. The answer is no, but uh, we do have rain falling currently as we look live at Windsor, the Detroit River downtown. Low 60s just about everywhere. You see the rain showers right over downtown. Pretty light stuff and mainly on the east side, but we're still about an hour away from drying out. We'll see a little sun this afternoon. It's a little windy, stays cool. Tonight at nine. Tomorrow is your last opportunity to enjoy Eastern Market on a weekday. The final Tuesday market at Eastern Market tomorrow. It's a Tuesday. Open from nine to three. Fresh produce, flowers, Tatiamara singing. <laughs> really? Zumba, aerobics classes, cooking demonstrations. <laughs> samples to taste and and as a bonus she will conduct a clinic showing you how to give the side the side the side stank what side. Are we the stank, stank side, side. <laughs> stank side stank side lessons free what time is there that you that you're doing that about you right after the show 11 30 oh, yeah, yeah. ish yeah oh that's too bad i'm busy <laughs> And while you're there, take your photo in front of our Live the D banner in Shed 2. Post it on our Facebook page and you could win a prize. You have until the end of the day tomorrow to post your photo. <laughs> Do the steak side while you're All at right. it. The steak side. It sounds like a dance. <laughs> <laughs> Popped off today. Movie database website, IMDB. You ever Google that? You know, see who's in a movie or whatever. Uh, apparently, they're going to have to remove the age of some actors under a new law in California. That's right. So the law forces subscription websites used by casting services to remove age information if asked. So the Screen Actors Guild says it will prevent age discrimination for actors who wish to keep their age private. Wow. Hmm. What do you guys think? You know, I was looking somebody up the other day and I noticed that it just said born 
whatever, Riverside, mm -hmm. California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no associated birth date, which struck me as odd. Never seen that before. But I wonder if that has anything to do with this. Quite possibly. And you know, stars that get to a certain age, they start lying about their age, mm -hmm. we're told anyway. They get stuck at like 37 mm -hmm. right. for a long time. I'm 29. <laughs> you look good. Stay there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the sports world is mourning the loss of a golf legend today. Arnold Palmer died Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. He was 87 years old. Iconic guy, right. right? Known as the king. Everyone from Tiger Woods to the president shared statements about his passing. Off the field, he was known for his charisma, his style, mm -hmm. taking the game to a different level, sort of elevating it from stuffy country club, you know, rich man's mm -hmm. game to sort of mm -hmm. uh, populist um, you know, hero and icon. He even has a drink named after him that he... Right. Um, Who can say that? Yeah. Half lemon. Well, it's not technically half lemonade, half ice. It's mostly iced tea with a little bit of lemonade. Yeah. Splash of lemonade. Exactly. Okay. So. You ever been with somebody who actually knows the difference and they'll say that to a waitress and they'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I just thought it was half and half. You know, they're a purist. <laughs> they want to know. Bruce Springsteen's self pen memoir hits the store shelves tomorrow and apparently the reviews are already out. And they're really good. Really good. So it's yeah. titled Born to Run. The new autobiography is a personal perspective on what shaped the life of the legendary rocker. In the book, he talks about seeing Elvis Presley on the Ed Sullivan show and how it changed his life. He also talks about life off stage and the struggles he's had with depression. Hmm. Many say, even if you aren't a fan of the boss, the book is well worth the read. And don't touch that dial because it's time for What's the Buzz? All right, everyone, time for What's the Buzz? Yeah. But first, huh. but first, oh, let's what? introduce everyone, then we have to ask Jason a question. Oh, we do? Jason, don't go. What are we supposed to ask? Oh. Pen or this Jason. This Jason. <laughs> this Jason. This Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> joining us today, we've got, <laughs> everybody's looking like, wait. Uh, what? <laughs> joining us, Blaine Fowler, host of the Blaine Fowler Morning Show on 96.3 WDVD. Good morning. Morning. Uh, Ramona Prater is here, media and marketing hey, specialist, and Jason Hall, co-founder of Slow Roll Detroit. So what about the penguins? Penguins. Ah, yeah, yeah. I was just talking in the back about uh -huh. how lucky that I got to be uh, picked to be part of a campaign called I'm a Penguin Person this year. And, they, and people don't know, you can actually go in the back room and actually sit with the penguins. Oh. And they'll jump all over you wow. and they don't bite. And I was just sitting in the back and people were like amazed. But I was amazed that it's just that, that accessible to the public yeah. that you can wow. actually get back. So was it pretty cool? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was like definitely one of those moments where you revert to being a nine year old again and you're awesome. trying to put one in your pocket and take awesome. it home. All of that for a small fee, right? Couple dollars. Couple, couple dollars. dollars. Couple dollars. Yes. Right. That's good. He said they don't bite, but they poop. So. Yeah, they will that. mess you up a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. Disclaimer. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to discuss some of the topics that are coming up after the split of uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. I know you thought we were done. Uh, there's a lot of this that's playing out in the media, right? He right. said, she said, who did what, what year did it start? I don't know. Get this. The FBI is even involved over the allegations of abuse, which Pitt's representatives say are false. Mm -hmm. Let's start with this question. There was a lot of discussion about them being a couple instead of getting married. Right. right. So, okay, as soon as they got married, everything kind of went downhill. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Does marriage mean something different to people? I think so. Yeah, it becomes real. Yeah. I think, I think living with someone is one thing, but when you, when you walk down that aisle and exchange those vows and all that stuff, I think it does. I think it, there's a certain realness to that that makes it more, okay, this is... This is for life. This is for the rest of our lives. And even with big names like Pitt and Jolie, it's still, it's a big deal. But you're making so much sense. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, anything right? that comes from the left coast. I know. I'm just saying, you're making so much sense. And it doesn't seem like when we hear these stories and you, it's coming out of Hollywood, I don't know. Does that make any, are you surprised by some of the stuff we're hearing? I can't believe that we're, we're using this couple as an, uh, yeah. as an example for marriage or, or whatever. It's just a lot of weirdness going on in that household. I think they're great actors and they do a lot of great things for humanity, but their marriage is, I don't, I can't believe we're talking about this. No, I had hope in it. I really did. I, I did too. Yeah. I don't buy it. Was I, did. Really, I really don't buy into too much pop culture these days, but yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I, I really kind of, I don't know if it was the facade they put up or 
how it felt like they built they built their thing. They were a right. couple, then they got married. After then they, they got tore kids. down the Aniston thing. So, mm -hmm. but it's but like see, that's what we were Aniston. told that he came out of a cheating relationship. Told mm -hmm. everybody right? knows that. That's just yeah. common knowledge. And then <laughs> went into this yep. relationship. So news. we're supposed and everybody should have have a chance to find redemption, right? right? For right. sure. But so maybe that was part of it. We just hope you're going to lose your man. How you found your that's, man? That's the that's saying. What they say on Mars. The way you should end up. My grandpa say it ain't no fun when a rabbit gets a gun. Yeah. And that's the thing. So is it is it true though? Once a cheater, always a cheater. See, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. It's funny. We've had this entire discussion on my show last week. We were having this. Can a can a relationship in Hollywood make it? And I would say that that's hard. That's hard to do because mm -hmm. you have two. Think about it. To be an actor, to be a successful actor of their level, mm -hmm. you have to have a big ego. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means, and being in marriage means what? Compromise. compromise. Mm -hmm. You have to be Less willing ego. to happily Absolutely. Yeah. compromise. Happily, not grudgingly, right? Exactly. So I'm, I'm impressed by you today. Yeah. Once to, in a while, I, I wake up and say things. Like, I love it. <laughs> I had bought into See. it because they weren't working as much as they were she before. She wasn't. Well, he still he She's was doing stuff every now and then, but like to. they really weren't working as much, and they kind of had demise falling out of the public eye a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I really thought that they were making a go of. I mean, and maybe they were, and they just got to that point. But I really did believe. I, look at me sounding like. No, no, no. I, mean, I, I get it, and I, I know we. I think we we wanted to work because we yeah. wanted our own life. We mm -hmm. wanted somebody to make it, yeah. because it may, it means that possibly we can make it yep. too. Right. But there was an interesting story I read a couple of weeks ago on Facebook of all places about. People who have happy relationships don't post a lot about them. They don't talk right. a lot about them because they're they more do. present in them. Yeah. If they're happy, they're present. You're not selling an idea like we're happy. Mm -hmm. Look at us. So we're why happy. are we? Why do we pull for Hollywood couples then? Is but it just for because, us? For us. I, I think it's for us. That's totally why. selfish. I agree. Yeah. It's it's already hard enough for two regular people who yeah. have mm -hmm. hard jobs sure. yeah. and other things going on. And when you see people of that magnitude, you say, man, it must be really hard to make that work. Yeah. And I hope for that. Compare agree. compare Pitt Jolie with Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks. Oh my One God. of the big differences there is that there was a compromise in, in the Hanks Rita Wilson mm -hmm. relationship. She is nowhere near in the spotlight right. as much as he is. Mm -hmm. Whereas Pitt Jolie, they were both, I think, competing almost in a way with mm -hmm. each other to be in the spotlight. And it's really hard to do that and have a successful marriage and have six kids all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. I had a friend who was cheated on and he moved on with someone. Mm -hmm. And she said, I want it to work because if you're going to devastate our life, at least go and let it be something that's going to be permanent and long lasting. Wow. Uh -huh. Does she have yeah. angels at her back? Does she have yes. Her back? <laughs> better than me. Yeah. She's, she's way better, better than me. Better than me. Well, good than to me. see you all. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. No good problem. discussion. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, really up cool. next, uh, we've got the first yeah. look behind the scenes where Jason has been where the penguins <laughs> fell in love with him. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Taking you behind the scenes at the Pole Penguin Conservation Center. That's coming up next. Do you suffer? Welcome to Live in the D on a Monday. You are almost exactly 39 minutes into this infotainment spectacular. You have no reason at all to deviate from your plan now. Stick with us until the end of the show and we will continue to enlighten you. The polar bears out at the zoo. They're staying cool in the water. Thanks for being with us. We have more penguins to talk about. You hear the hey. deep bass voice? That's this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Big Rand. Yeah. No, I meant the bear. The bear. He was the bear. <laughs> well, as Big Randy was singing. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier, we showed you all around the Polka Penguin Conservation Center, but now we are taking you inside behind the scenes. Yes, and we found out it takes a village to care for these animals and this multi-million dollar attraction. Check it out. Here at the Polk Penguin Conservation Center, we have 83 penguins of four different species. And on a daily basis, our keeper staff is about three to four keepers. There is a lot of animals to take care of in this habitat, so it takes a lot of manpower. Every day we start at six in the morning. We have to check on everybody and prepare their fish every day. We use about 140 pounds of fish for all of these animals. In the wild, they would be eating a lot of krill and squid as well. We have offered that here. They tend to prefer the fish. To feed them, we actually take buckets of fish out and hand feed everybody. We'll also pool feed throughout the day to mimic that natural feeding behavior in the water. 
We also have to come in and clean their habitat. We have several hoses and scrub brushes and a lot of elbow grease. Something that people wouldn't realize that's going on in this building as they're walking through the public area is that there is a lot of equipment behind the walls. Um, it takes a lot to maintain the temperature of the water and to filter it out. We want to make sure it's clean for the birds and obviously for the visibility of the guests. So there's quite a chilling system for the water and the air. The water is kept at 40 degrees and the air is at about 38. Penguins typically live to about 25 years of age, um, even in the wild and in captivity they tend to live a lot longer. Penguins are diving birds so they can hold their breath underwater for a fairly long time. It's up to a few minutes and it will depend on the species of bird because obviously the larger birds can hold a little more than the very small ones. They do like to collect things so when they're building their nest they will pick up anything they want and try to put it in their nest. Even in the wild they see birds going to other birds' nests and stealing pebbles from them. We do see that here. Even though there's this nice pile of rocks sitting right next to them, they will go to their neighbor and take from there. This new habitat is very novel for them and we've seen a lot of natural behaviors displayed because of it. We don't want to have to supplement, we want the habitat to be able to do that itself and I think we've succeeded. <laughs> How what? cute is that? Why were we laughing through the whole thing? I, I don't know. They're just so inspiring, the penguins. But you know, smiling. Yeah, but Tati asked that at the beginning of the show, what puts you in a good mood? We're just watching this, and we're, we're all kind of having a yeah. fun time. Giggles and smiles. Yeah. Kudos to Michelle Oliver. Lying great job. Mm -hmm. um, great beautiful, job on that. Beautiful so. piece. All right, remember the Penguin Center is open year-round, and you can check it out when you buy your ticket to visit the zoo. Next, live in the D, the Local 4 Super Singer Contest. The contestant is now part of a national ad. We're catching up with Grace Lee for Music Monday after the break. Hi to everybody out in Mount Clemens this morning. Still a little bit of a rainy day, but that's going to move out, we're told. Thanks for staying inside with us. We love a rainy day and a Monday when you're here. This is live in the D. <laughs> Right. Hey, weather is expected to clear up for the slow roll tonight in Detroit. Registration and meetup begins at 5.30. It's at Gleaners this time. That's 2131 uh, Buffet in Detroit. Mm -hmm. The ride runs from 6.30 to 8, and Gleaners has asked that all riders wear orange for tonight's slow roll. That's good. For Music Monday, today we have someone who just appeared in our Super Singers competition earlier this year, remember? Oh, I hope she still likes us all, right? I think she yeah. does. Grace Lee is back. What a delightful young person. And this, this lady, 17 years old, and while she didn't win Super Singer this year, it hasn't stopped her from chasing her dreams, huh? And rightfully so. So since being part of the fireworks show, she has lent her voice to part of a national ad campaign for Olive Garden titled Best of You. Take a look. Have you ever wondered how time flies? And why we always count the moments since our last goodbye? Besides being part of this ad, Grace has also just released her first EP titled Darling. Here she is now singing Like a Bird. Like a bird falling from a tree, I'm falling for you, are you falling for me? My face turns red when you're around. Can't play it cool Cause what I found And it's hard to walk Or make a sound Look out below Cause I'm crashing down Like a bird falling from a tree Should I be scared? Is this insane? I used to think love was a game. I was not prepared to feel this way. So look out 
help below Cause I'm tempting fate Like a bird falling from a tree I'm falling for you, are you falling for me? And as far, as far as I can see I'm falling for you, are you falling for me? so many years but time seems to start when you are near like a bird falling from a tree i'm falling for you are you falling for me and as far as far as i can see i'm falling for you are you falling for me like a bird falling from a tree i'm falling for you are you falling for me and as far as far as i can see i'm falling for you are you falling for me Nicely done. Thank you. Does it come natural? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's taken time to get used to that, but I mean, singing on TV isn't always the most natural thing still. No, but I mean, you, uh, you have a studied calm about you, I think, that comes through in the oh, music, don't you? Thank you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I've gotten that a few times. I, I really appreciate it because sometimes I definitely don't feel it. Sort of a wise beyond your years kind of quality. <laughs> uh, tell me about your new EP, Darling. Um, yeah, I'm actually super pumped about it because um, I've been working on it for like five months and that includes Mike who's playing guitar for me, Mike Molnix and Steve Saputo who isn't here today, they produced it for me. Um, yeah, I've just felt really blessed to have all the people around me supporting me through it and it's really been a blast. I have just been handed a copy of your, what is <laughs> when you it. see this, what, I mean, what do you, <laughs> what goes through your head when you see that? You've it's, got something physical that you can hold. It's not just a download. Yeah, it's it's super surreal um, to just see it all put together, especially because it's been so much time and like years of writing songs. So um, it's really crazy to be at this point. All right, how did the national ad campaign for Olive Garden come about? I mean, one minute, I feel like it was just yesterday. <laughs> I started at this TV station, and a week after I got here, we did the whole singing competition mm -hmm. down at the, next to the Renson and the 4th of July and all that. And now you're in this Olive Garden campaign. Yeah, that's, that's super bananas. I, I was really shocked by the whole thing, how it played out. Um, because Mike, he called me, him and Steve, and they said, we have a song we're gonna pitch to an ad, can you learn it? And that was literally, I was in my cafeteria at school eating lunch and I had my earbuds in and I was learning it. And that night, I didn't study for my Spanish quiz and I went and learned a song and that happened. <laughs> that is utterly amazing. Yeah. Now, um, I, there was some joking about endless <laughs> breadsticks and salad uh, yeah. during the break. Tell us about that. <laughs> I tweeted at Olive Garden and I said, free breadsticks, and they said, anytime, so I might have to utilize that one. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember when Olive Garden opened up back in my college days, and we used to mm -hmm. go in there and just uh, freeze, I mean, not free, but you pay for it, but endless salad and breadsticks, we yeah. just keep it coming, keep coming back oh, to the I know, table. and I'm all about the free stuff, so. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next adventure in music for you? Um, I guess in music, just keep writing and performing. Um, some, an adventure for me really is the proceeds of this EP mm -hmm. um, go to my trip to Nepal <clears throat> and at the end of October. So I'm going for two weeks to work with girls who are at, at risk of being trafficked. So that's, that's a big adventure. Yeah. And socially <laughs> conscious. Good yes. on you. Godspeed on the trip and good luck with the music Thank career. Thank you Break so much. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Tell so everybody out there where they can find you on Twitter or uh, Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. Pretty much look up Grace Elizabeth Lee on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, whatever, or you can look me up at my website at GraceElizabethLee.com. Grace Elizabeth Lee, common spelling, I'm looking at it right here, .com. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back with more Live in the D. I told you, stay with us. <laughs> Is your home? 
All right, Grace Lee is going to play us out for the rest of our Monday. So good to have you here. Absolutely. Thank you for Latest having me. Introduce us right to your here. partner really yeah. quickly. This is Mike Molinex. He's the best. All right, good to have you both here. Mike, Grace, yes. have a great day. Help us out here. Thank you. We need to get away. The world is feeling gloomy today. I'm feeling misplaced at home, feeling so strangely alone. But above us lies blue and white, trailing the sun's sinking light. You ask me where I like to go, but that is an answer you already know. We've been here all day. Watching the clouds drift away. When you think. I'm Ed Rodcast me on your Monday morning with another local four news update. And today, Pitts, uh, Tim Hardaway is going to learn if he'll serve jail time for his DUI arrest. The Pistons assistant coach was arrested back in April in Beverly Hills after police spotted him and he was speeding. Hardaway's blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. He pled no contest earlier this month and Hardaway is now facing six months in jail. He's due back in court at around 1.30 this afternoon. Well, good Monday morning, everybody. It has been uh, a little raw out there, not super cold, but just rainy and stuck at this 63 degree mark here for the last several hours and not going to get a whole lot of movement. The winds are going to pick up, but the rain showers starting to wind down a little bit. You see east side still hanging on out west over Lake Michigan starting to clear. So hoping to get into some sunshine after two o'clock and again, a little bit breezy 